Hi, welcome to Scrambled. My name is Dylan McGelligan. And I'm Nora Filet. And today we're going to be looking at rugby, both McClatchy rugby, Davis High rugby, all kinds of Jesuit high school rugby. Jesuit rugby. Even Jesuit rugby. Oh, yeah. And we're also going to review a few movies in theaters right now, starting with a hard-hitting, testosterone-flowing, patriotic thrill ride, G.I. Joe Retaliation, starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson, former wrestler and now successful actor. It's going to be a really cool episode, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Stay tuned. rugby, I tend to think about the injuries that come along with like those contact sports. So uh, we did an interview with a boy named Beppe and he goes to McClatchy High School and during a game versus Jesuit he was hit and he got a massive concussion on the field and he also started to have a seizure. So I thought that this would be a good opportunity to ask him about his experience and how, how he views the sport rugby. And while we uncover this brutal gentleman sport, we might just find a few surprises. Let's take a look. Here you go. So I'm here with Beppe and uh, we're going to talk about rugby. Um, so. You find rugby to be better than other sports. Yes, that's right. <laughs> All right, so why? Why do you think it's better than, say, football? I mean, uh, <laughs> the friendships it creates, really. I know people from New Zealand, Canada, um, all over California that I've played with and against. Um, I mean, it's really just, you're playing this sport where it's brutal. You know, you're hitting each other, you're getting into it, there's blood, you know, there's pain. So it really brings people together. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, it was Shakespeare, I believe, who had the quote, um, he who sheds his blood with me shall forever be my brother. And that's kind of become um, a rugby quote um, because oftentimes people are sharing blood, you know? You get cut playing, but afterwards, you know, you've had this really intense experience with the other team and you all gather together. Um, you know, your coaches say a few things. Um, pick a player of the match who you thought did well for the, both the backs and the forwards, almost like MVP, but for both teams. Then you get up, everyone, uh, you know, they introduce themselves. Um, and then the hosting team, um, while they're playing, they're preparing a meal. And you all eat together. The idea is to eat together um, and make a new friend, basically, because you're going to end up playing with them some point most likely you know it's a pretty small it's growing but it's still a small community so a lot of the people you play with you know you'll play with in college or you'll, you'll play the, the kid you were just tackling you'll end up on his team at some point so I mean it really it, it makes friendships and there's very much stress as camaraderie um, more than any other sport I've played the highest level soccer here in America and after those games you know People are still just cussing at each other and, you know, yeah. wanting to get in fights. Not that kind of um, friendship. Though, yeah, I mean, the has. parents even. You know, I, when I was in nationals for soccer, we had a parent from another team throwing rocks at our coach. In rugby afterwards, you know, the parents meet each other too. And, like, I've, I mean, I've gotten in a few fights in the game. And afterwards, you know, you're friends with the players. So that's why I say it's better than any other sport is because it really it bonds both the teams it's not my team is better than your team it's hey we're playing the sport together let's be friends so when I watch rugby I kind of see mixes of soccer and football uh -huh. is it like a combination of the two or more like I mean it came rugby came out of soccer in 1823 William Webb Ellis at the rugby school of England um, he picked up the soccer ball 
while they were playing because he was like, screw this, I don't need to kick it with my feet, and someone tackled him. So we're like, screw that guy, he just picked up the ball. Um, and then when it came over to America, actually, the um, athletic instructor at Yale, he kind of turned it into football with the whole yardage and um, like having downs. So football came out of it is why you kind of see similarities there. Okay. Um, people started hitting more aggressively, so they added the pads because too many people were dying or getting hurt. Um, and that just comes out of the line of scrimmage, you know, that you're going to have those bigger kick hits when you're going, you know, you have someone running a route this way, and then they just get smacked because they're turning to catch a ball in rugby. The ball's coming back so you can see everything that's going to happen oh, in front yeah, of you. Oh, yeah, because in rugby you can only throw the ball... Backwards. You throw the ball or backwards the sides, or sideways, right? and you can kick the ball forwards. Oh, so, okay. I mean, football changed that, and they started throwing it forwards, oh. and now you're getting those huge hits. You know, someone's turning to catch it, and they're getting hit from this side. So they kind of had to add padding. Football. Yeah, more fun. Exactly. It is. <laughs> okay, so uh, I did hear though that you got into a little rugby accident. Yeah. Uh, what what happened with that? I mean, it comes with the game. Had a little little concussion. Kind of still out um, from it, but hopefully we'll get back. Well, in. I heard it was a little bit more than just a little concussion. <laughs> it was a dramatic yeah. affair. Yeah. Um, basically, I got hit blind. You know, I was passing the ball off mm -hmm. to my teammate. Um, just got hit, you know, got, other guy was standing up, didn't get low, which is kind of one of the techniques to tackling that makes it a safe game, and he didn't do that, so head-to-head -head contact, went down, uh, hit my head again, started seizing, and it was just all bad from there, you know. Uh, was in the hospital that night, got to come home, uh, luckily there was no real, um, like brain damage or anything. That you know of at this point. Yeah, I had a, a CT scan and it was a good one, that's so good. that's good. But yeah, I mean, I missed a, a week of school, and then the next week was spring break, so I didn't go to school that week either. And came back to school, all my teachers have been really good about it. You know, they didn't give me uh, homework, they're, you know, accommodating for it, making sure that I'm not getting headaches in class or anything like that, so. Still on the path to recovery, but I think I'm getting pretty close. So would you say this sort of thing's common for rugby? No, or? not at all. I mean, it was, it was kind of a freak thing to Just happen. Just got unlucky. I've, I've never seen it um, happen before, really. I have seen uh, one of my teammates go down and start season a little bit, but that was his fault. He just didn't tackle right. He tried to tackle him straight with his head and just got knocked. So... But it, he was at fault for it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, he knows he was at fault, yeah, too. He'll so. admit it to this day. But, no, it's very uncommon for that to happen. It was kind of, I was shocked when I heard what happened. You know, I was like, wow, that doesn't it's happen mean, normally. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have a grudge against the guy that hit you? Uh, at first, a little bit. But now that I've seen him and he's apologized to me and remembered that we were friends, uh, not really at all, no. Mm -hmm. Alright, um, well, it was great to have you here with us, Buffet. <laughs> Thanks for Thanks having for me. Thanks for joining us here on Scrambled. Alright, so let's take a break from all of that concussion and rugby stuff. Uh, Dylan went to go and see G.I. Joe, so he saw it twice. So I think he's got a pretty good movie review for us today. Well, G.I. Joe, a lot of people would go in saying it's just going to be a big, cheap, dumb action movie. It's based on an action figure, not a doll, an action figure, which is amazing. That's how it came off as. Our whole lives, we have been suppressed by feminism. Everything's a romantic comedy. Barbies are so prominent. No, we need action figures. We need G.I. Joe. We need America's heroes. And in the first G.I. Joe film, Channing Tatum was cast as the lead character. And he was nothing then, and since then he has become something, and he has become a sex symbol for women. With Magic Mike and all that, and <laughs> he has no place in an action movie anymore, or anything relatively masculine. So, he was killed off in the first, you know, 20 minutes of the movie to be replaced by Dwayne The Rock Johnson. America in a man. He has biceps bigger than most people's waists. God, he's just amazing. And that is the spirit of this movie, the spirit of America, 
and the spirit of hard work, spirit of baseball, spirit of hot dogs, spirit of beer, just everything we need. God, that movie, like most movies are just like a smooth little Prius driving along the highway. No, that was a monster truck jacked up with steel testicles hanging down the back, American flags flowing everywhere. It was just nice, all right? Sure, it had no plot, it was completely cliche, but it had Bruce Willis come in for no apparent reason. And that was also awesome, because Bruce Willis is another actor comparable to Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Just artists in their craft. And man, was it a thrill ride. So did you like it? Yes, I did, <laughs> Nora. So if you compare that movie to, let's say, something like The Godfather, how would it compare? The Godfather's all Italian stuff, and I don't know. I didn't really understand it very much. I mean, sure, Coppola gave his best shot, but <laughs> you cannot compare it with John Chu's G.I. Joe retaliation in theaters now. All right, so let's take a little peek at the trailer. Um, from what I took from it, it really looks like it's geared toward boys, even though it does have all these female sex symbols. Uh, would you take them as male role models, I guess? Well, that was the one complaint I have about the movie. There was a woman whose entire drive to serve in the armed forces was so her father would salute her and to be taken seriously as a soldier. Now, I think women should just be cast as the sex symbol and not really given that sort of drive, because I thought that kind of, you know, provoked feminism. Uh. And I thought it should just been more Dwayne The Rock Johnson just killing hordes of people. Oh, wait, so, okay, w what were they killing, or was this in, like, in Iraq, or...? Well, a, uh, a division called Cobra had kind of overthrown the armed forces and the president, and you don't do that with the G.I. Joes or America. So we had to rise up and just kill Cobra, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they tried to cause this huge nuclear crisis, and they built a satellite-based weapon system that destroyed London, which is fine with me, because we took our freedom from London. Exactly. All right, well, you know, I can't say this is a movie I would rush to and go and see, but apparently for a male audience, it was attractive. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what it. I took from it. So maybe in the next 15 years, I will stumble across watching this movie, but I'm not gonna. It'll be required in schools in probably two years. Yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure about that. But uh, yeah, okay. Um, so, after G.I. Joe, what other movie did you see? Well, I saw Olympus Has Fallen, which also had a good, strong American message. But it was kind of a copy of Die Hard, and I really like Die Hard, so I don't know how I felt about that. It used the same system that they kept broadcast on the same channel, so we could talk to both the villain, do the witty remarks, you know, but he, Gerard Butler could not pull it off like Bruce Willis could. So I can't say I was a fan of that. It had a lot of plot holes, seemed kind of improbable how they overtook the most secure building on the planet, like in... 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. But besides that, um, other movies in theaters, there's The Host, which is a Stephanie Meyer novel, so it's awful. Um, what else do we have? Can uh, you think of anything? I don't know. They're all building up for Gatsby, so. Yeah, Gatsby should be interesting. We're looking forward to that, reviewing that on this show. Um, yeah. I, but I have to say that I will be going to see The Host, because I feel like I need to see that one. I'm kind of curious how alien mind invasion is going to work. If the cuz I read the book, I I will admit it, I read the book and the entire book takes place in this one girl's head. So there's two characters inside one person. So I'm really curious how they will show that in a movie. I guess they could use a lot of narration. But yeah. But why the host Kind of like a little pretty cupcake, you know? You have the decorations and it's all cute and it might be nice to look at. You know, had a bridal, sh bridal shower, a baby shower, any kind of shower. Well, it's that's an not alien a real shower. end of the world book. Okay, that's how it markets itself. It says, oh, it has so much action. Let's get all the guys to come in and see people blow each other up. That's cool. No, it's not that. That's a disguise. Kind of like Twilight. They said, oh, a big vampire war. That's what the preview is like, oh, look at this battle. It's an epic conclusion. No, at the core, it's a love story. And I'd rather take the big stake with no women involved, just at a steakhouse, roadhouse, just longhorns on the walls, truckers, bikers. That's what I want. I don't want your little pretty cupcake. No. So, uh, Dylan, um, how often do you see these movies by yourself? All the time. <laughs> Probably nine times a week. Yeah. Which you might say is more than once a day. It is more than once a day. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I kind of got that from this movie review. Sort of what you do with your time. Um, all right. Well, I have to say that I am most looking forward to seeing Gatsby this year. I was a huge fan of Is Mulan. it because it's set in America? <laughs> oh my gosh, what is it? No, no. It is from the director who did Moulin Rouge, and I like the songs in that movie. So I don't know if they will be singing in Gatsby. A lot of Jack White. Um, Judging by the trailers. Yeah, I, I don't know if they're doing that. But it will be really pretty and artsy, and Leonardo DiCaprio is fantastic, as he always is, you know. And I hopefully, actually, he's he's gonna die in this one too. Wow, <laughs> thank you. Not all of us have read the novel. Oh, well, you know what? It, it, that is a crime against America if you have not read that American classic. It's a crime against America that you haven't seen G.I. Joe yet or Olympus Has Fallen. Yeah. No. It's like, why don't you just move to France or some other hipster place? I don't know. Yeah. You probably don't even watch baseball. Yeah, no. No. But, um, yeah. All right, so I think that concludes our movie review. Um, yeah, so let's go back to rugby. Another European sport. So we're joined here with Brendan and Nash, and they are on the DHS rugby team. So actually, excuse me, that was actually the Davis rugby team. You're not a part of DHS. No, we're not. Um, we're, basically, we're basically a club team that's affiliated with Davis High School, so it's not necessarily a high school sport, but we're in connection with the school. So you're like the middle child of Davis sports, just always neglected. A little bit, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we can say that. I'm sorry. Well, uh, first off, can you tell us a little bit about the sport of rugby? Um, I don't know a whole lot about it. I know that in the East, uh, in you know Europe and South Africa specifically, it's really popular. From what I've heard, uh, it originally started at a European or I think it was English boarding school, and it was like a soccer game or something, and some guy picked up the ball, and everyone thought it was brilliant, and so it just kind of took off from there. And now it's just basically popular worldwide except for the United States you don't see it as popular but specifically in South Africa they have like rugby boarding schools for high schoolers it's just insane it's this huge following all right sounds like quite a cultural impact yeah, yeah. and uh, any injuries I mean I've heard about Nash's <laughs> How many concussions was that? Uh, I got two concussions in one game because <laughs> uh, I got take like I came down and I'm like the field we we're playing on had a bunch of dirt patches in it and I came down on the side of my head and I remember blacking out and then I went to the sideline and like everyone told me not to go back in but for some reason I went back in somehow and I got hit again and so I got knocked out that time and I couldn't remember my name or anything. I was, yeah. And th they don't have trainers that stop you from going back in after you've obviously no. suffered a major head injury. <laughs> well yeah. so, sometimes we do. I mean at this one we d it was an away game. Um, normally when we play home games we have a trainer there with us but in this case we didn't. And uh, I was kind of confused as to why Nash was back in the game. And by the time I realized it, Nash was on the pitch, knocked out. But yeah. <laughs> well, it seems to be a pretty common thing for rugby. I've heard of tons of kids getting concussions. Is it, do you think it's more common than, in, say, football? I, I, I football is actually worse. Yeah. I, just got, I got pretty unlucky. Like, I usually, I don't know, for some reason in rugby, I get unlucky with injuries. Like last year, I uh, tore my sternum, so yeah, I don't know, it's kind of random. I think with football, the whole thing is, is we have these helmets on and these pads, so we like think we're protected, and so we accelerate to just way faster than we should be, and we lead with our heads, where in rugby it's more protective, so we don't necessarily try to hit someone with our head. But well, you don't, you don't have any padding on at all, though. It's not like you have helmets. I hear, I mean, sometimes you have the yeah. little leather things. I've yeah. seen pictures of people who have that, but doesn't seem like it would really help against a 200 pound guy slamming into you. They teach you how to tackle differently in rugby where you don't use your head as much and it's like mostly your arms and it's the rest of your body. So it helps a lot. Yeah, the padding's pretty minimal. I mean, they have, you can wear some padding. Like you said, they're called scrum hats and they're basically like an inch or so thick, maybe half an inch of just kind of squishy material. And you can wear shoulder pads. Like I wear these little shoulder pads that are basically the same thing, but they provide enough support so that's not necessarily a huge impact, but just, it's pretty minimal, yeah. 
And scrum caps are usually just used for your ears for cauliflower ear. So like they're not really meant for protection. What yeah. is ca cauliflower ear? Uh, it's, yeah. yeah, it's um, <laughs> when you scrum, like when you get in a scrum, you put sometimes like if you play lock, your head is in between other like, two other people's like thighs. Oh, like this. And your ears will rub yeah. together, so it makes kind of like they like swell up and get filled with this like liquid. It's like severe ear trauma, and like you'll see it sometimes in wrestlers too. It's like the ear kind of turns inside out, and so it, it just it's, it doesn't look very good. Yeah, it looks nasty. Yeah. <laughs> so, you, you mentioned that about the between two other men's thighs in the scrum. <laughs> Um, how often would you say you scrum in one game? Um, it just depends on the game because, uh, yeah. like, the more knock-ons, the more you'll scrum. So uh, it just, like, depends on the game. But probably, like, on an average. I'd say at least 20. Yeah, like, like 15. Yeah, if we're playing, like, a bad team, one where there's a lot of minor penalties, we'll, I mean, like, we've scrummed, like, 30 times in a game. And it's then awful. It's terrible. <laughs> then you play, like, a good team, and you maybe have five or six, and... Yeah, so the less scrums, the better. <laughs> so who's attracted to this sport? Is there like a certain kind of guy that likes to scrum or? Uh, or maybe even a ruck, if that's what you're into. Um, just kind of anyone really, like a lot of random people play, but just like anyone can play. Yeah, this being our first year, we have a lot of guys from the football team out there. And so a lot of people who are used to, you know, hitting people in contact, but really anybody can play the sport. That's what's really cool about it. You have 15 people on the field at a time if you're playing 15s, and it's all teamwork. And so not one person has to be just that insane monster. You know, of course, it's nice to have those people, but anybody can really play the sport. So we get a good mixture out there. And uh, take us through some rugby terminology. Everything is a little switched up from football, which people confuse because they associate the sport with football because it's America. Yeah. And um, <laughs> anyways, there's a few terms I was kind of unclear on a try, try. example. Yeah. It's like the equivalent to a football touchdown. And the only difference is that once you get into the try zone, which is like the touchdown or the end zone, you have to put the ball down. And wherever it's placed, you have to kick from that angle. Also, tries are only worth five points. And kicks are worth two. So yeah. kicks are worth a lot more like in relativity in the sport. But you can't attempt a drop goal at any time and score three points, right? Yeah. Yes. It's, yes. It's, yeah. it's essentially like a field goal, except it's at any time you want to. Okay. And there are no stops in rugby, right? It just all continues, all flows into the game? Yes. Yeah. It's pretty much nonstop. Yeah. There's like penalties and breaks and stuff, but it's, it's kind of like soccer in the sense that it doesn't really stop. There's just a running clock. I must be tiring. Yeah. I've heard talk about a girls rugby team in yeah. Davis. Uh, can you share some information about that? Is it the exact same thing or is it different? Same sport, just like they're really aggressive. I know. Yeah, girls rugby. I mean, I think our girls team is actually pretty good. I'm friends yeah. with a couple of them, but the girls rugby is just they're they're aggressive people. I mean, they're they're good at what they do and they're nice people. But you know, girls have long hair and nails, and it it can just they're physical. True. Yeah. So I've seen a movie called Invictus. Uh, do you think that's a good portrayal of the sport rugby? I think it glorifies it a lot. Uh, I haven't particularly seen the whole movie, actually, so I don't know a ton. But I think, from what I've heard about it, it's really just, it really resembles how much rugby means to the population in South Africa and all of Africa and Europe. It's just how much you can have a whole country on your back as a national team. At least that's what I can gather from it. And so I think that's really good for the sport. Yeah, it's not really the case in the United States quite yet. Yeah. But maybe someday. <laughs> yeah. So rugby doesn't actually kill racism? I, I don't. I don't know. It might. It could. I haven't had to come across that situation yet. Oh, well, I thought we found a cure. Well, yeah. <laughs> this might work. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to hear more about this concussion. Are you still playing? or? Um, yeah, I actually got cleared to play tomorrow on Monday. So how long were you out for? I was out for three weeks, and I had to do, um, I took a baseline test, and I had to get back up to my baseline before I got cleared. And I took like these brain steroids. I don't, really, I don't even know. They said steroids, but yeah. So um, yeah, that helped a lot, I guess. And now I'm back. Did the brain steroids uh, enhance anything else in your academic life? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Unfortunately, no. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> well, and how would they test you for concussions to make sure that you're back um, to, to par? 
they gave me this concussion test and it has a bunch of questions like do you have a headache all these other questions like dizziness and nausea and um, after it happened I couldn't really walk because I kind of had to like help get walk to the car. His parents carried him to the car. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they just said I had all the symptoms of concussion. So. And are you completely back to normal now? Yeah, actually, yeah. Completely. You guys go ahead, I'm gonna address that. Yeah, so what are, uh, do you have, <laughs> I've heard that people who have gotten concussions are more likely to get them again. Do you have that fear of playing rugby now that you're more susceptible to another head injury? Uh, not really. I just want to, like, I'll probably play a little more careful, but I just want to play because I missed three weeks and, yeah. yeah. Like, for me, I think, like, I've had concussions before and I think that if from I... From rugby or football? Uh, not from rugby, I think, but basically it's just, I think if I go out there worried about getting hurt or playing a concussion, it's just going to happen more because I'm not focused. I think if you're going full speed doing what you're supposed to do, you're not as likely yeah. to get an injury. And so I think that, uh, if I go out there thinking I'm going to get hurt, then I just it's more prone to happen. Yeah, I mean, it's all about mindset. Yeah. You know, exactly. Okay. <clears throat> I will now show the audience what the object is. Now I'll show Nash. <laughs> A car, I think. <laughs> A car. Good. <clears throat> Another question? Uh, so, <laughs> uh, the fear of um, concussions in other sports, do you think it's as high um, uh, compared to rugby? Or is rugby like this sport that you're just going to get hurt in? No, um, rugby really isn't that bad. Um, there's actually more injuries in soccer than rugby. And I feel like football get most injuries. Yeah, yeah it's get pretty unlucky for rugby for some reason. Yeah, it's, I think rugby is just, it gets a bad rap just because there's no pads and there's a lot of collisions, but it's really not as bad. The physicality of it is still there, but it's, it's weird to say, but it's a good physicality. It's gentle, <laughs> gentle hitting, yeah. At times, it's just the physicality is better because you just, after you get hit, you're right back up and moving, and so it's just kind of like a stinger, and you're like, oh, it's fine, and so you feel better. All right, Dylan, are you ready to share your next yes. test with Nash? The audience will see what it is. Now, Nash, what do you think this is? An eye? Oh, I got Nye. this. It's a rugby ball. Oh, uh, what? Okay. Probably it's, last <laughs> it's like, it looks a little like an eye. It's like three-dimensional. See, it's like a see-through rugby yeah. ball. Yeah. It's, like a, it's like three bananas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, can, I feel like we see the effects of the concussion. <laughs> <laughs> and now we go on to the more abstract part of the test. <laughs> All right. Um, so, for uh, future games, uh, are you hoping to see like a growth in uh, people who want to be a part of the game? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're coming up to the end of our season now. We've been going since December or so. Yeah, so it's a pretty long season. Oh, yeah, um, it's long. But we've got yeah, one or two more weeks and then a playoff tournament. And so it's going to be... It's going to be good. And we're, we're hoping next uh -huh. year more people will come out. Yeah, there's probably going to be more interest in the sport because you guys have been doing well, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially for a first-year team. It's been, uh, it's been nice. We've had lots of support, too. So it's good. It's really enjoyable. That's good. All right. We'll now move on to the Rorschach test. Nash, what do you see? Scribbles. Oh. Oh, Dots Sorry. and some <laughs> scribbles. Maybe a signature that's kind of weird. I don't know. It's a lamp. Uh, I thought I it was a face. <laughs> I thought it's it was like a face. Right there yeah, like nose. two eyes, a nose, and an ear. Kind of a uh, Picasso esque. It looks nice. Good. You should frame it. It's good. All right. Well, I, I feel like from this test, we can see that there's definitely some side effects that come with concussion. <coughs> Not being able to read b between the lines in that way when Nash said that this picture illustrated simply scribbles and dots indicates the effects of brain injury and why you should always wear a scrum cap. <laughs> All right. Well, do you guys have any other closing statements you would like to say? I, just, I think rugby's good. And anybody who's out there who wants to play rugby, uh, definitely 
come out, join the team, try it out next year. I think it'll be great for you, and I, it'll definitely be great to have you out there. So that's a, that's what I think. <laughs> you want to draw anything? Um, All right. Well, thanks for draw. joining us something? with Nash, yeah. Brendan, okay. and right. uh, we will go and see one of their practices. My highlight was scoring my first try in the first game of the season as the third try of our, of our team. That was pretty sweet. That was pretty sweet. That was pretty sweet. <laughs> Do you guys like each other uh, as teammates? Yeah, we're pretty tight. Yeah, I like him. Oh, us <laughs> too? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, our team's pretty close. Yeah, we get along pretty well. We have fun. Well, that about wraps it up. Today we covered a lot of things, such as rugby, concussions, film. I did a review of the epitome of phallus-led filmmaking in Hollywood. And I really think that rugby is going to be the next American football. You know, with all the violence, I think it's really going to be a huge draw for people in the years to come. Nor? Nor? Yes, Dylan? American football is the next American football. And baseball is the second next American football. We'll see. We will see. All right. Hot dogs. Well, that about concludes things here on Scrambled. We'll see you next time. Stay classy, Davis. <laughs>